students so first of all i welcome you all to youtube lessons organized by department of pre university education karnataka government in association with dakshina kannada pre university college principals association in earlier videos i completed the chapter coordination compounds now i am going to start a new chapter that is surface chemistry the unit 5 in second pc chemistry syllabus the unit 5 in second pc chemistry syllabus and before starting this particular chapter i just have one correction for the mistake that i made in the first video of the coordination compounds in the first video of the coordination compounds now you can find the lacand pyridine this is pyridine the okay na this is acting like a neutral monodentate ligand and uh, its iupac name is pyridine but uh, i gave uh, the name for this compound as uh, pyridyl pyridyl is not the name of this particular compound in iofax system you know the name of this ligand is retained as yes it is uh, pyridine there pyridine itself but we have uh, one ligand of this type that is this is bidentate ligand here two pyridine molecules will be joined through a single bond the name of this ligand is dipyridyl name of this ligand is dipyridyl but name of this ligand is name of this ligand is pyridine so e difference ana solpa notice maadi nanu oversight aagi pyridyl anta bartide hagagi idana pyridine anta maadkoli okay na idon correction nan helbekittu okay na and now you know we'll start uh, yes it is uh, the new chapter from physical chemistry of second pc that will be surface chemistry there as far as the chapter surface chemistry is concerned 6 hours allotted for this particular chapter in the syllabus number of hours allotted for this particular chapter is 6 hours and of course uh, from this particular chapter you know you can expect 6 uh, marks question you can expect 6 marks question from this particular chapter out of 6 marks you know you can expect uh, one question in part a of the question paper that carries one mark apart from that you know there will be one question in part d of the question paper that carries five marks in part a that one mark question is uh, question number 5 and of course uh, in question paper no we have uh, question number 31 the question number 31 of the second pc question paper is from the chapter surface chemistry and that also carries five marks totally six marks questions you can expect from this particular chapter and out of five marks you know five mark question can be of uh, 2 plus 2 plus 1 type or it can be of 3 plus 2 type question so this is something about uh, the weightage of the chapter surface surface chemistry in second pc annual examination question paper yes with that information we'll start the discussion surface chemistry look at the title of the chapter surface chemistry is it not it's a chemistry of surface of a substance substances are characterized by surfaces you know this if i take this as a substance you know it is a substance one substance it may be a solid or liquid 
and this particular substance you know is characterized by surface and bulk look at the the outer part of this particular substance you know this is what we call it as surface the outer part of this particular substance is called as surface a inner part of the substance is called as bulk the inner part or you can say inner region of this particular substance is called as bulk the outer region of this particular substance is called as surface or you can say surface is a top layer of the substance this is a top layer of the substance that is called as surface there and as far as surface is concerned you know it can also be called as a interface surface can also be called as a interface okay na just imagine if i take as it is this is a duster and it is a solid or the it is a solid state and this solid state this duster is in contact with air this duster is in contact with air this is a outer region of this particular duster or the this is this is this one this one and this one that is outer part of the yes it is uh, this particular duster there are all the surfaces this surface is in contact with yes it is air which is in gas phase and therefore this surface can be called as interface this surface can be called as interface because this surface separates solid state from the gas phase this surface separates solid phase from the gas phase therefore surface is interface it is a boundary that separates gas phase and solid phase athwa surface is a interface that separates two bulk phases or therefore you know as far as surface is concerned it is a yes it is a, the boundary surface or interface is a boundary that separates two bulk phases and as far as interface is concerned interface between two physical states athwa interface between two phases is represented by using a symbol slash or you can say hyphen i can represent interface by making use of this particular slash or you can say hyphen or you can say say for example if i say gas and of course uh, solid this is hyphen i am using in order to yes it is differentiate two phases gas phase and solid phase or you can say liquid solid i can make use of this slash also in order to represent that particular interface also so that is what we call it as representation of yes it is interface Sur surface chemistry is a chemistry of surfaces with the chemistry of interfaces it deals with the study of various processes occurring at the surfaces or interfaces and that is called as surface chemistry surface chemistry deals with the study of various processes occurring at surface or interface agudala that is what we call it as surface chemistry as far as uh, the processes occurring at the surfaces are concerned you know something about corrosion of metals corrosion of metals takes place at the surface of metals second you go for this you know it will be electrode processes various uh, electrode processes you know like electrode reactions you know they are taking place at the surface of electrodes you go for the electroplating is also a surface process is it not that is various electrode processes you know they are taking place at the surface of electrodes apart from that you know the third process that is taking place at the surface will be crystallization that is crystallization and uh, dissolution of solid crystallization and dissolution of solid is also taking place at the surfaces so that is these are the three processes that i can quote as far as the processes at the surfaces are concerned in addition to these three processes you know i can introduce yes it is uh, three more concepts which will be related to the surface of a substance so those concepts will be yes it is it will be adsorption one of the concepts that is related to the surface of a substance will be adsorption second concept it will be catalysis one more important concept that is related to the 
surface of a substance that is what we call it as catalysis third important concept is what we call it as colloidal chemistry colloidal chemistry is a uh, one more concept that is also related to the surface of a substance and as far as uh, the chapter surface chemistry is concerned we are going to study the detailed aspect of adsorption catalysis and colloidal chemistry in this particular discussion you know in this particular chapter you know we are going to study something about adsorption and that is catalysis and colloidal chemistry okay na then let me begin with yes it is uh, what we call it as adsorption as i said you know adsorption just observe the spelling there it is a d yes o r p t i o n a d adu observe maadi it is adsorption because you know you are very much familiar with the word absorption but i am talking about adsorption here it's a surface phenomenon it is taking place at surface of a substance okay na so that is adsorption as far as adsorption is concerned adsorption refers to the process of accumulation of molecules of substance on the surface rather than in the bulk of the solid or liquid and that is called as adsorption you know adsorption refers to the process of accumulation of molecules of substance on the surface of yes it is on the surface rather than in the bulk of the yes it is uh, solid or liquid and that is what we call it as adsorption just observe i am writing the particles over the surface of this particular solid other just observe i am writing the molecules of a substance will be attached to the surface of this solid or liquid the molecules do not enter into the bulk of a substance this is a bulk of a substance you don't you don't find any molecules at the bulk of the substance you will find only the molecules at the surface of a solid and that process of accumulation of molecules of substance on the surface rather than in the bulk of the solid or liquid and that is called as adsorption adsorption can also be stated as the process of attracting and retaining molecules of a substance on the surface of solid or liquid and that is also called yes it is adsorption agodala example for the adsorption will be yes it is when silica gel when silica gel is exposed to the moist air that is air containing moisture when silica gel is exposed to the moist air yes when silica gel adsorbs moisture from the air so that uh, air can be dried by using silica gel silica gel one it is a colorless crystalline solid when this crystalline solid colorless crystalline solid when it is when it is exposed to the moist air it adsorbs moisture from the air and so that you know all the water particles will be attached to the surface of yes it is uh, silica gel there hmm. yes agodala and of course uh, as far as uh, adsorption is concerned in order to convince the concept of yes it is adsorption you know i just give one example that is you know just just imagine i am writing something on the board i am able to write on the board by using chalk because the particles of chalk will be attached to the surface of blackboard i can write something on the board because you know the particles of chalk will be attached to the surface of board that is it's a adsorption process these particles of chalk do not enter into the yes it is bulk of the blackboard they are retained only on the surface of blackboard i can write something on the blackboard only because of adsorption of chalk particles on the surface of blackboard and this is also an example for adsorption and for convincing purpose i am just uh, uh, yes it is included this okay na if i if any question like you know uh, write example for adsorption anta kelidra you just write adsorption of water by silica gel is an example for yes it is adsorption process hagadre adsorption is a yes it is a, what to call it as it's a surface phenomenon where the molecules of substance will be attached to the surface of solid or liquid and that is called as adsorption agodala as far as adsorption is concerned adsorption takes place between two components right that is uh, now let me introduce components of adsorption let me introduce components of adsorption 
Adsorption takes place between two components. One component is adsorbate. One component is adsorbate. The second component is adsorbent. Second component is adsorbent. These are the two components, you know, between which adsorption takes place. As far as adsorbate is concerned, the substance that accumulates on the surface of another substance that is called as adsorbate. Atwa, the substance that gets adsorbed on the surface of another substance that is called as adsorbate. And as far as adsorbent is concerned, adsorbent refers to the substance which provides surface for the adsorption or you can say the, the substance on the surface of which adsorption takes place. Therefore, I just consider this adsorbent as a one which provides a surface, the one which provides a surface for adsorption to take place and that is called as adsorbent. And of course, uh, in the example that we gave here for the adsorption, you know, as I said, you know, the silicogel adsorbs water. Now then, in that particular example, silicogel is acting like a adsorbent. Now then, and water vapor is acting like a adsorbate. Now then, that is, uh, in the example, that is adsorption of water by the silica gel. Silica gel is adsorbent, water is a adsorbate. So that is what we call example for the, yes, it is adsorbent and adsorbate. And of course, uh, as far as adsorbents are concerned, many examples I can give for the adsorbents. One is silica gel, alumina gel, charcoal powder, some metal powders. They are the examples for adsorbents. Apart from that, you know, as far as adsorbate is concerned, I can give so many examples for the adsorbates, various gases like oxygen, chlorine, ammonia, sulfur dioxide, carbon dioxide, okay, na? and of course some colored organic compounds, okay, na? some colored organic compounds from the solution. They're all examples for adsorbates. So that is something about adsorbate and adsorbent. Yes. Before going to the next topic, you know, let me give some important observations which will be taken as evidences for the adsorption process. Okay, now that is what we call it as uh, evidences for evidences for adsorption. Evidences for adsorption. As well. you can also give a title here, adsorption in action. And I'm just here. I'm going to list out some observations where adsorption takes place. They are considered to be evidences for adsorption process. First evidence is, just imagine, just imagine one, yes it is uh, the gas jar, yes. This is, yes it is uh, one gas jar, yes. This is a gas jar in which, uh, so various gases are present like chlorine, oxygen, sulfur dioxide. These are the gases which will be present in a, yes it is gas jar. And the gas jar is closed because of that, you know. The gas inside the, yes it is, uh, this particular gas jar is characterized by certain pressure. This gases inside the, the particular gas jar, you know, closer gas jar will be characterized by certain pressure. And if I introduce some powdered charcoal, if I introduce some powdered charcoal into the gas jar, then pressure of the gas jar decreases. If I introduce some powdered charcoal into the gas jar, pressure of the gas inside the gas jar decreases because of adsorption of gases on the surface of charcoal. Once the charcoal is added to the, the jar containing gases, you know, the gases present in the gas jar will be adsorbed on the surface of charcoal. Thereby, pressure of the gas inside the gas jar decreases. And this is one evidence for the adsorption process. Let me take up one more uh, series observation where uh, the adsorption takes place and that is what we call it as just imagine the solution of uh, the organic dimethylene blue yes so this is uh, the solution of uh, methylene blue and this is a colored solution right when uh, animal charcoal when animal charcoal is added to the methylene blue solution the intensity of the color decreases. The intensity of the color decreases because of the adsorption of methylene blue dye particles on the surface of animal charcoal due to the 
adsorption of methylene blue dye particles over the surface of animal charcoal the intensity of the color intensity of the color of the solution decreases and that is also because of adsorption so this is the second evidence for the adsorption of substances on the surface of other substances and that is what we call it as second observation as far as third observation is concerned as i said already air can be dried by using silica gel air can be dried by using silica gel is it not and that's also because of adsorption and uh, for that purpose you know i can show you yes here this is one uh, uh, bottle containing tablets this is one bottle containing tablets okay now you just observe in this bottle you know you can find uh, yes it is uh, one small bag containing a crystalline yes it is a solid just observe in this tablet you know in this tablet bottle this is a tablet bottle right you just find here this is one small bag this particular bag is containing yes it is a, a silica gel it is in this particular bag you know we have a silica gel that is a crystalline solid this particular bag containing silica gel is placed in tablet bottles because you know uh, this silica gel is going to absorb this silica gel is going to absorb the moisture inside the bottle thereby that silica gel provides moisture free atmosphere to the tablets so because of that you know these tablet bottles you know these tablet bottles you know will be added with a yes, city small bag containing silica gel silica gel adsorbs moisture from the atmosphere that's also evidence for adsorption process agbodala and as far as fourth evidence is concerned you know you might have you might have seen uh, that is uh, the sugar cane juice right sugar cane juice is nothing but uh, it's an aqueous solution of sugar is it not it's an aqueous solution of raw sugar how that and that uh, sugar cane juice is characterized by some yellowish brown color is it not that aqueous solution of uh, raw sugar is characterized by yellowish uh, brown color no ne niu bekadre sugar cane juice color nodidre gottagutte dark color iruthade that's because of uh, some colored organic matter present in sugar cane juice that color of uh, the sugar cane juice the dark color of sugar cane juice can be removed by adding animal charcoal when animal charcoal is added to the yes it is aqueous solution of raw sugar what happens you know that uh, the solution becomes colorless because of adsorption of uh, the colored organic matter on the surface of animal charcoal so that's also an example for yes it is uh, adsorption process okay na so these are the some evidences uh, in favor of adsorption process these are the some evidences for the in favor of adsorption process agbodala so this is something about adsorption meaning of adsorption components of adsorption other and also adsorption in action or you can say evidences in favor of adsorption agbodala so this is what we call adsorption and in, in addition to this particular adsorption you know let me introduce what is that you know adsorption also let me differentiate adsorption from absorption so as i said adsorption is a surface phenomenon but as in the case of yes it is absorption the molecules of substances will be penetrating into the bulk of the solid or liquid in the case of absorption the molecules of substances will be penetrating into the bulk of the solid that's why you know this absorption is called as bulk phenomenon absorption is called as bulk phenomenon yes absorption is called as bulk phenomenon then as far as absorption is concerned absorption refers to the process of uh, assimilation of uh, process of assimilation of molecules of substance uniformly throughout the bulk of the solid or liquid and that is called as absorption absorption refers to the process of assimilation of molecules of a substance throughout the bulk of a solid or liquid that is called as absorption or you can say absorption refers to the the process in which the molecules of a substance penetrate uniformly throughout the bulk of the solid or liquid and that is called as absorption the best example for the absorption is that you know when a sponge is dipped in water what happens you know sponge is going to absorb water is it not sponge is going to absorb water that's because the penetration of water molecules into the bulk of the sponge just imagine
when biscuit is a different tea you know the particles of tea will penetrate into the bulk of the biscuit and that's why it is absorption again when sponge is dipped in water absorption of water by the sponge takes place and therefore as far as absorption is concerned that is due to the penetration of molecules of a substance uniformly throughout the bulk of the solid or liquid and that is called as absorption so agagi absorption is a bulk phenomenon adsorption is a surface phenomenon as far as uh, the example for the absorption is concerned when calcium chloride that is uh, when anhydrous uh, calcium chloride when anhydrous calcium chloride is exposed to the moist air calcium chloride absorbs water from the water from the air when anhydrous calcium chloride is exposed to the moist air anhydrous calcium chloride absorbs now that uh, the molecules of water will penetrate into the bulk of the calcium chloride there okay na that's why you know this is what we call it as anhydrous calcium chloride absorbs water from the air whereas silica gel whereas silica gel you know that uh, it absorbs water from the air calcium chloride absorbs water from the air that's why you know if you just observe here the particles are shown in the bulk of the yes it is solid or liquid here the particles are attached to the surface only no particles are entering into the bulk here as far as adsorption is concerned whereas in the case of absorption the molecules will enter into the bulk of the solid or liquid so that is what we call it as adsorption and best example is adsorption of water by anhydrous calcium chloride agbodala and of course uh, at the same time you know there are some processes at the same time you know there are some processes where adsorption and absorption take place simultaneously such type of processes are called as sorption so sorption refers to the that is uh, what we call it as sorption sorption refers to the process in which absorption and adsorption take place simultaneously and that process is called sorption there just observe here you can find the particles you can find the molecules of a substance on the surface of a solid as well as inside the yes it is in the bulk of the solid also you can find here molecules at the surface as well as at the bulk of the solid and that's why it is sorption so sorption refers to the the process in which absorption and adsorption take place simultaneously but even though you know that uh, both are taking place simultaneously that is there is a uniform distribution of particles throughout the bulk of the solid but uh, the concentration of the molecules at the surface will be greater than that in the case of bulk so that is the observation as far as sorption is concerned so this is what we call it as adsorption absorption and sorption but here as far as sorption is concerned example for the sorption is when cotton is soaked in ink when cotton pack you know that when cotton pack is soaked in ink there adsorption and absorption of ink particles take place simultaneously some of the ink particles will be retained on the surface of uh, yes it is cotton fibers some of the ink particles will penetrate into the yes it is uh, uh, the cotton fibers so that's why you know that uh, cotton pack soaked in ink is an example for sorption there so this is what we call it as adsorption absorption and sorption and with examples agbodala yes now at this moment you know as far as uh, your syllabus is concerned you are supposed to study yes it is differences between adsorption and absorption we'll see that differences between adsorption and absorption yes so let us see the differences between adsorption and absorption right so far we discussed uh, the meaning of adsorption and absorption now let us see differences between adsorption and absorption let me see one by one right adsorption is surface phenomenon right adsorption is surface phenomenon whereas absorption is bulk phenomenon absorption is bulk phenomenon that is first difference in the case of adsorption the molecules are concentrated 
molecules are concentrated only at the surfaces. The molecules are concentrated only at the surface of adsorbent. Whereas in the case of absorption, molecules are distributed molecules are distributed uniformly throughout the bulk of solid or liquid. In the case of absorption, molecules are distributed uniformly throughout the bulk of the solid or liquid. That is uh, the second difference. The third difference is adsorption is rapid in the beginning. Adsorption is rapid in the beginning and it becomes slow after some time. It becomes slow after some time because you know in the beginning of adsorption surface area of adsorbent is more therefore adsorption is rapid in the beginning of the adsorption and it becomes slow after some time. And as far as uh, absorption, it takes absorption is concerned, it uh, takes place at uniform rate. It uh, takes place at uniform rate. That is uh, right from the beginning. That absorption process takes place uniformly. That is uh, what we call it as absorption. As far as uh, fourth difference is concerned. Extent of adsorption, extent of adsorption depends on surface area rather than mass of adsorbent. Mass of adsorbent, this is one point. Extent of adsorption depends on surface area rather than the mass of adsorbent that is what we call adsorption. Now in the fourth difference here, the extent of adsorption depends on mass of a substance. The extent of adsorption depends on mass of a substance rather than surface area rather than surface area of substance. That is uh, one more important point. Now that adsorption, extent of adsorption depends on the surface area. As surface area increases, extent of adsorption increases. Whereas absorption, it doesn't depend on the surface of a substance. It depends on the mass of a substance. As the mass of a substance increases, the extent of absorption increases. So this is what we call it as differences between adsorption and absorption. Example of other adsorption of water on silica gel that is adsorption absorption of water on anhydrous calcium chloride that is what we call it as uh, the absorption okay now so these are the examples for yes it is uh, absorption and adsorption and of course uh, that is the differences between adsorption and absorption right now in order to convince this adsorption and absorption, I am going to show you one simple demonstration, right? I am going to show you one simple demonstration, right? So that you will be perfect with this particular aspect, adsorption and absorption, yes? Look at this, uh, this is uh, one plastic cover, yes? Now I am going to spray, yes, this is one plastic cover, yes? I am going to spray water there, yes? I am going to spray water there, yes? Just observe. Water particles will be on the surface of, yes it is a plastic there. You can find there you know some of the water particles, water, water molecules are you know, flowing down, okay now. They are attached to the surface, okay now. This is what we call adsorption. These uh, adsorbed water molecules can be easily removed, yes. These, uh, yes it is uh, adsorbed water molecules on the plastic can be easily removed by applying mechanical force. And that process of removal of adsorbed surface, adsorbed substance from the surface of adsorbent is called desorption. Here, 
the plastic is a plastic cover is a adsorbent water is a adsorbent i can easily remove the water particles from the plastic surface by applying mechanical forces so this is adsorption of water on the plastic okay now whereas uh, if i yes it is uh, take you know the tissue paper here yes i am going to yes it is uh, spray water there over the tissue paper look at this uh, just observe water particles are absorbed by tissue paper yes water particles are absorbed by tissue paper i cannot remove this water particles from the tissue paper easily as i did in the case of plastic sheet out then and therefore the the accumulation of water particles on the plastic surface is a adsorption your assimilation of water particles in the yes it is tissue paper so this is what we call it as absorption your water particles are penetrated into the bulk of the tissue paper thereby removal is not easy here is it not but uh, in the case of yes it is uh, plastic there you know the water particles are yes it is uh, they are they are attached to the yes it is surface there or the they are attached to the surface these water particles cannot penetrate into the plastic there i can easily remove them and that process of removal of adsorbed substances from the surface of adsorbent it is called as uh, desorption we call it as it's called as desorption and desorption can be brought about by increasing temperature and by decreasing pressure desorption that is removal of adsorbed substances from the surface of adsorbent can be brought about by heating or by increasing temperature and by decreasing pressure so this is what we call it as desorption <laughs> as i said you know i just you know i gave one example in the previous disc, in the in the last discussion you know that is uh, that is a solution of methylene blue right this is colored solution if i add uh, yes it is uh, charcoal powder if i add charcoal powder to the methylene blue solution the intensity of the color decreases due to the adsorption of methylene blue particles on the surface of charcoal yes now if i heat this solution intensity of the color increases the solution will regain its original color due to the desorption of methylene blue particles from the surface of charcoal that's why i said uh, desorption can be brought about by heating or by decreasing external pressure so this is what we call it as uh, desorption there i for the la yes now at this moment with this particular information Let me take up uh, one important discussion that is uh, mechanism of adsorption. Right? Mechanism of adsorption. This is uh, one more important task or concept under adsorption. Yes, no doubt uh, adsorption involves uh, accumulation of molecules of substance on the surface of adsorbent. Or the naturally question rises. what is the driving force behind the adsorption what is the driving force behind the adsorption or you can say what is the actual mechanism involved in adsorption of a particular substance on the surface of solids athwa liquids now that in order to understand this mechanism of adsorption you just consider one solid yes this is one solid substance right here in this solid you can find the particles in the bulk of the solid this is bulk of the solid i consider one particle and also i am going to consider one more particle at the surface consider these two particles right i am going to differentiate the nature of the particle at the bulk and the nature of the particle at the surface here this particle in the bulk of the solid is uniformly attracted by surrounding molecules in all the directions this particular particle or molecule in the bulk of the solid is uniformly attracted by surrounding molecules in all the directions because of that that resultant pull experienced by this molecule in the bulk of the solid is zero the resultant pull experienced by this molecule in the bulk of the solid is zero but uh, in the case of uh, molecule at the surface 
this molecule at the surface is attracted by the molecules lying below it only is it not this molecule at the surface is attracted by only the molecules which are lying below it because no molecules are present above the surface molecule because of that this molecule is attracted by only the molecules which are present below it because of that this particular molecule at the surface of solid experiences that is uh, resultant resultant backward attractive forces this particular molecule at the surface of adsorbent experiences resultant backward attractive forces or that particular molecule in the surface of adsorbent experiences resultant experiences resultant inward forces inward forces this particular molecule at the surface of adsorbent experiences resultant inward forces because of that in order to balance this resultant inward forces experienced by the surface molecule the adsorbent is going to attract this adsorbent is going to attract the other molecules and retain them on the surface of solid because of that this resultant backward attractive forces experienced by the surface molecules is main cause for adsorption of substances over the surface of solids or liquids so this is what we call it as the main cause for the adsorption there and that is the mechanism involved in the adsorption of molecules on the surface of solids and at the same time i also quoted as surface area increases amount of adsorption increases just look at this you know this is a chalk this particular chalk is characterized by certain surface that you can observe is it not correct chalk is certain surface and as the surface area increases the extent of adsorption increases is it not and how to increase the surface area on the new pressure imagine if i break this chalk look at this new surfaces have created earlier we had this is a surface that we had is it not now if i cut it you know new surfaces are created if you continue that cutting process you know new surfaces are created yes that's why you know new surfaces are created that means if you go on dividing uh, adsorbent there you know the surface area of the substance increases therefore amount of adsorption increases now that, that's why you know an adsorbent in its finely divided state is a very good adsorbent Atwa, a substance in its finely divided state is very good adsorbent because of that you know you can observe in various catalytic reactions you know we are going to make use of uh, finely divided catalyst and the word use you know, just imagine in the manufacture of ammonia we used finely divided iron there is it not that is what we call it as uh, the yes it is in finely divided state you know a substance will be acting like a very good adsorbent How the? And of course, uh, in order to justify that, you know, let me show you one schematic diagram. Look at this. Consider one adsorbent with X molecules. In this particular adsorbent, you know, the X molecules are held together by certain force of attraction through a certain bonds, right? So this is one particular adsorbent, yes. And X molecules are held together by, yes, it is certain, yes, it is bonds there, or the these molecules are held together by certain bonds or the these are the unsatisfied valences these are the unsatisfied valences right okay now if i cut this particular yes it is a solid if i cut this particular solid the bonds between the molecules of adsorbent broken or the the bonds between molecules of adsorbent broken or the once the bonds are broken yes you are going to get this signal you know, that is uh, once the bonds are created, once the bonds are broken, just observe here. New unsatisfied valences are created. Once the 
bonds are broken new unsatisfied valences are created at the same time surface also increased number of uh, unsatisfied valences are increased as the surface area increases number of uh, free unsatisfied valences will be increased because of that you know extent of adsorption increases because of that you know extent of adsorption yes it is increases if you go on dividing a substance if you go on dividing a substance more number of bonds between the molecules of adsorbent will be broken more number of unsatisfied valences are created and thereby yes it is uh, residual forces on the surface of uh, yes it is adsorbent will be increased and thereby amount of adsorption increases right and that's why you know a substance in its finely divided state is a very good adsorbent this is the mechanism involved in adsorption process now at this moment you know let us see thermodynamics of adsorption thermodynamics of adsorption right And as far as adsorption is concerned, adsorption process is exothermic in nature. Therefore, delta H is negative because adsorption is a kind of force of attraction between adsorbent and adsorbent. Therefore, adsorption is exothermic, delta H is negative. At the same time, in the case of adsorption, entropy decreases. Therefore, delta S is negative because, you know, once the adsorption takes place, the freedom of movement of molecules of substance will be restricted or you can say randomness of molecules decreases thereby entropy decreases or change in entropy will be negative you know once the adsorption starts entropy of system decreases or you can say change in entropy becomes negative because you know during adsorption the free movement of uh, molecules of adsorbent will be decreased because of that you know the Gibbs equation delta G is equal to delta H minus T into delta S will take a form now this equation can be changed to minus delta H minus as it is uh, T into minus delta S with respect to the adsorption this equation can be written like this because delta H is negative here minus delta S. Delta S is negative here minus delta S. Because of that, you know, equation will take a form delta H plus T into delta S. So this is uh, the Gibbs equation for, yes, it is adsorption process. All right. And of course, uh, according to this equation, look here, if... Uh, delta H is greater than T into delta S then delta G will be negative oh, then according to this equation if delta H is greater than T into delta S then delta G becomes negative and therefore adsorption process will be spontaneous and this is true in the beginning of adsorption process as adsorption proceeds that delta H goes on decreasing, delta H value goes on decreasing and it becomes equal to the T into delta S. If delta H becomes equal to the T into delta S, then delta G becomes equal to zero. As adsorption proceeds, the delta H value decreases. At one particular stage, delta H value becomes equal to the T into delta S. And if Delta H becomes equal to the T into delta S. These two will be cancelled. Then delta G becomes equal to zero. And at this particular stage, adsorption will be at equilibrium. Adsorption will be at equilibrium. So this is what we call it as the thermodynamics of, yes, it is adsorption. So this is thermodynamics of adsorption. Yes. Now let us see. The next discussion as far as your adsorption is concerned, it will be Adsorption of gases on the solids. Now our discussion is restricted only for the adsorption of uh, gases on the solids. Your gases are the adsorbents, solids are the adsorbents. With respect to the adsorption of gases on the solids, we have two types of adsorption. One it will be physical adsorption. 
वन इट विल बी फिजिकल एडसॉप्शन यस वन इट विल बी फिजिकल एडसॉप्शन दिस इज आल्सो कॉल्ड एस वैन डूवर्स एडसॉप्शन यस वन इट विल बी फिजिकल एडसॉप्शन और एक इन से वैन डूवर्स एडसॉप्शन यस दिस इज आल्सो नोन एस फिजिस ऑप्शन दिस इज आल्सो नोन एस फिजिस ऑप्शन राइट And the second is of course chemical adsorption. It's also called as chemisorption, or you can say it can be named as Langmuir adsorption. As far as physical adsorption or Van der Waals adsorption is concerned, this is a phenomenon in which adsorbate is held to the surface of adsorbent through weak Van der Waals force of attractions. Physical adsorption is a phenomenon in which adsorbate is held to the surface of adsorbent through weak Van der Waals force of attraction. That is, in the case of physical adsorption, no chemical reaction is involved between adsorbate and adsorbent. Only it is a physical change. that adsorbate is attached to the adsorbent through very very weak force of attractions that is van der waals force of attractions and that is what we call it as physical adsorption and as far as example for the physical adsorption or cancer adsorption of chlorine gas adsorption of chlorine gas on the surface of charcoal as per your ncert textbook you are supposed to study characteristic properties of physical adsorption characteristic properties of physical adsorption we'll see one by one yes it is this physical adsorption is of course uh, it is just a physical change it is just a physical change no chemical reaction is involved between adsorbent and adsorbent athwa no formation of bonds takes place between adsorbate and adsorbent this is what we call it as physical change even though adsorption takes place nature of adsorbent and adsorbates will not be changed nature of surface will not be changed even though adsorption takes place so this is what we call it as first point the second is as far as the physical adsorption is concerned it is uh, non specific in nature physical adsorption is not specific physical adsorption is non specific in nature uh, that means here in the case of physical adsorption as you know that there are weak van der waals force of attractions between adsorbate and adsorbent and those van der waals force of attractions are universal because of that you know in the case of physical adsorption adsorbent doesn't show any preference for a particular gas in this type of adsorption that is in physical adsorption your the adsorbent the surface of adsorbent doesn't show any preference for the particular gas for adsorption to take place because of that every gas can be adsorbed over the surface of every adsorbent if i take you know if i take you know a mixture of uh, non reacting gases in a jar like chlorine sulfur dioxide ammonia carbon monoxide like that you know if i add charcoal to the uh, gas jar there you know all the gases will be adsorbed on the surface of charcoal there is no preference every gas can be adsorbed on the surface of charcoal means what you know that adsorbent the surface of adsorbent doesn't show any preference for adsorption of a particular gas on its surface because of that you know this physical adsorption is non specific and as far as uh, the third property is concerned right you know physical adsorption involves uh, weak force of attractions because of that you know that uh, the amount of heat liberated during physical adsorption will be very very low that's why it is characterized by low enthalpy of adsorption low enthalpy of adsorption so this is another property of physical adsorption it is characterized by low enthalpy of adsorption it will be from 20 to 40 p 
kilojoules per mole. This is uh, another property there. And of course, uh, as far as uh, the fourth characteristic is concerned, that is with respect to the nature of adsorbate. With respect to the nature of adsorbate. You know, in this particular discussion, adsorbate is a gas that you remember. I am talking about adsorption of gases on the solids. Your adsorbate is gas. As far as gases are concerned, you know, I can classify gases into two types. Easily liquefiable gases and the gases which cannot be easily liquefied. Like that, you know, I can classify the gases, right? Easily liquefiable gases, you know, they are characterized by strong intramolecular force of attraction. Yes, therefore, easily liquefiable gases, you know, they readily adsorb over the surface of adsorbent compared to the, the those gases, you know, which cannot be easily liquefied. And at the same time, easily liquefiable gases are characterized by high critical temperature values. Like, you know, the sulfur dioxide is characterized by that is a high critical temperature of 630 kelvins. The critical temperature for sulfur dioxide gas is 630 kelvins. Critical temperature for methane gas is 190 kelvins. Critical temperature for hydrogen gas is 33 kelvins. These are the critical temperature values. As I said, easily liquefiable gases are characterized by high critical temperature value because in the case of uh, these gases, you know, the intermolecular force of attractions are strong. Therefore, they undergo adsorption easily. Atwa, they readily adsorb over the surface of, yes, it is adsorbent. And because of that, you know, amount of sulfur dioxide, sulfur dioxide gas adsorbed on one gram of charcoal, amount of sulfur dioxide gas adsorbed on the surface of one gram of charcoal is more compared to the amount of methane adsorbed over the one gram of charcoal there because critical temperature of sulfur dioxide is more intermolecular force of attractions will be more over there here in the case of methane its critical temperature is just 190 kelvins less than that of sulfur dioxide therefore amount of methane gas adsorbed on the surface of one gram of charcoal is less compared to that of the sulfur dioxide look here hydrogen its critical temperature is very very less and therefore that amount of adsorption in the case of hydrogen on the surface of one gram of charcoal is very very less because you know as critical temperature decreases van der Waals force of attraction between the gas molecules decreases therefore the extent of adsorption of gases on the surface of adsorbent adsorbent decreases so and of course as far as critical temperature is concerned this is the temperature above which gases cannot be liquefied whatever may be the high pressure is applied that is called as critical temperature yes so that is in the case of uh, nature of adsorbent the gases with a high critical temperature values will undergo adsorption easily compared to the gases with low critical temperature values so this is what we call it as the fourth property the nature of adsorbate as far as physical adsorption is concerned physical adsorption is reversible in nature that is, uh, physical adsorption is reversible in nature. This is uh, one more property of yes, it is physical adsorption. Because, you know, in the case of physical adsorption, there are weak van der Waals force of attraction between adsorbate and adsorbent. Therefore, adsorbed gases can be easily removed just by heating and by decreasing pressure. And therefore, yes, it is uh, that physical adsorption is a reversible process. Now the, and for example, if I take, you know, consider a gas, this is adsorbate, yes. If I consider gas as adsorbate, yes. Over a solid, solid is what? Adsorbent, yes. This is a adsorbent. When gas is adsorbed on the surface of solid, we are going to get, yes, it is a gas solid interface, yes. This is gas solid interface. And uh, heat is liberated during adsorption, yes. And of course, the forward process is exothermic. Forward process is exothermic, and this process is reversible. You know, according to Lichtenstein's principle, exothermic processes will be favoring at low temperature. At the same time, in this particular case, you know, look at the here is a gas when it is adsorbed on the surface of solid. You know, pressure decreases, and of course, this process proceeds through 
liberation of heat and decrease in pressure because of that you know this forward process is favored at low temperature and high pressure according to leach atlas principle and uh, if i change the conditions means if i increase the temperature or if i decrease the pressure process will be reversed according to leach atlas principle therefore in the reverse process there is a desorption of gases from the surface of solid or the, that is desorption of gases from the surface of solid can be brought about by increasing temperature and decreasing pressure so this is what we call it as one more important property that is physical adsorption is yes it is reversible in nature as far as the sixth property is concerned physical adsorption involves formation of multi molecular layers right athwa physical adsorption is multi molecular layer of adsorption physical adsorption is multi molecular layer multi molecular layer of adsorption here the main reason for the formation of uh, more than one layers on the surface of adsorbent is due to once again weak van der waals force of attractions and these weak van der waals force of attractions are universal as universal as i said now the and these weak van der waals force of attractions they may operate beyond the mono layer that is formed on the surface of adsorbent no doubt the force of attractions are very very weak but they are operating beyond the mono layer and because of that you know there is a formation of multi molecular layers on the surface of adsorbent yes and as far as the seventh property is concerned right and that is physical adsorption depends on yes it is surface area there physical adsorption depends on surface area as usual as the surface area of adsorbent increases um, amount of adsorption on the surface of solids increases so this is what we call it as one more property there that is surface area as far as eight properties concerned that is as far as eight properties concerned this physical adsorption involves uh, low activation energy this physical adsorption was low activation energy or you can say no activation energy you can say that is physical adsorption involves low activation energy or no activation energy because activation energy is essential for chemical reactions but uh, this physical adsorption doesn't involve any chemical reactions here how the because of that you know activation energy required for physical adsorption is very very less or you can say there will be no activation energy required for physical adsorption but in the case of chemical adsorption the activation energy is very very high because chemical adsorption involves chemical reaction between adsorbent and adsorbent yes so this is what we call it as uh, the characteristics of physical adsorption yes so in the next video we'll see the chemical adsorption and of course adsorption isotherms agbodala so this is what we call it as adsorption different types of adsorption and that you know we discussed physical adsorption and of course the characteristics of physical adsorption agbodala so we'll see in the next video remaining things in the next video right thank you